Hello again. Depending on how you speak, this movie is either called AKA Mr. Chow, or Aka Mr. Chow, or also known as Mr. Chow. It doesn't really matter. I reviewed it. I reviewed all three for the price of one. Isn't that, isn't that nice of me? Click subscribe for multiple versions of the same film being reviewed simultaneously in one bundle. So uh, I'm going to go with AKA Mr. Chow for right now. That's the, that's the one that I select. But the one you select, I'm sure, is equally valid. I would question Aka Mr. Chow, but, uh, you know, it's you. Make your own choices. So, um, <laughs> AKA Mr. Chow is a documentary that is currently available on Max. It's from HBO, and it does have an audio description. So, you can enjoy it with the comfort of images being described to you in what is mostly a talking head documentary. So, you occasionally only get to hear the narrator when when they're free, when they're able. So, it's, uh, it's not it's very infrequent. I got got to be honest, but it's there. Uh but that's just the way that talking head documentaries work when people don't shut up and the whole narrative is to just keep people talking. Um audio description just has a really tough time. So, um but the good news is people are always talking and they're always explaining and talking about the personal experiences and you kind of get the impression that uh, a lot of times people are just sitting on camera or whatever it is that, you're, that you need to look at is maybe not as important as everything else. So um, you're absorbing these life stories about Michael Chow, uh, who started off you know, living in, in China. He was born in 1939. Uh, he was born uh, and uh, he's still alive. Dude's still kicking. Uh, he ended up getting shipped up and shipped out of China by his, his mom who wanted a better life for him and uh, he started learning English and he started being attracted to film and he started finding bit parts and he talks about pretty openly about how sometimes because I don't know if you noticed his birth year in 1939 but he went through, through some times where Hollywood was still uh, we not not really understanding how we should be representing uh, Asians on on camera. So uh, he talked about how openly he was playing in some stereotypes and um, reflected upon that. He's much more chill about it than uh, a lot of other people would be. So uh, uh, it's his choice, you know. He can he can react to things as he as he wants. This is a documentary about him. If he wanted to set the world on fire for how he was asked to portray certain characters, go for it, dude. It's your documentary. But if you want to just kind of be like, eh, it was, it was what, whatever it was, and I just wanted to make a movie, okay. Well, and that's that's your choice too. It's your documentary, and just letting you tell me your story. So that's what I'm here for. I signed up for that. Um, and, uh, he moves on through the films and he's actually been in a couple of things, although he's uh, kind of a bit player. Uh, he's not a movie star, which is why I had no idea who he was going into this. Um, but he's, uh, most of his things are like, like his, his most, his number one role on IMDb is You Only Live Twice. His character's name is Spectre 4. So, uh... Unless you can recall Spectre 4 from memory, you know, unless you're that big of a James Bond fan where you're like, oh yeah, Spectre 4, yeah, I remember him. He's a good guy, you know. Uh, I, I just don't think you know who this guy is. <laughs> so, um, but possibly, you know, if you're a New Yorker and you had an opportunity to visit his restaurant, because twist, plot twist, he also has a restaurant, um, that, uh, yeah, then, then maybe, but... Uh, his place has been open forever and, and became sort of this uh, place where celebrities hung out and they talk about all the people who had hung out there over the years and, uh, you know, how it became like a safe haven for a sort of artists and weirdos. 
and uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat felt very at home there. Uh, a lot of, you know, there were parts where people just looked at him as a black dude with dreads, and then other people who knew who he was uh, loved and appreciated him, and he was, he felt very appreciated at Mr. Chow's. I did notice, very interestingly, in uh, Michael Chow's filmography, that he was in Basquiat, uh, the film starring Jeffrey Wright from the mid-90s, and he played himself. So he played himself in Basquiat's uh, own biopic, which he was a friend of, of Basquiat. Uh, just ha knowing all these people and sort of being friends with them and, and getting to weave, he's just sort of like one of those people who lived a really interesting life um, and, uh, that's sort of what, uh, makes this film interesting, is that he's somebody who had sort of an interesting life and got to see and do all of these things without ever really becoming a household name on their own. Um, he talks about the kinds of things that happened to his family, uh, lots of tragic things within his family. Uh, he's on he's not on his first wife and you'll hear why um and uh i definitely caught a point where he was talking about being a father to a two-year-old and i was like you are you a father to a two-year-old <laughs> you're 84 <laughs> what are we doing here so i did pass a little bit of judgment i was like come on bro like that kid's that kid is not going to have his dad at his high school graduation. At some point, we have to be responsible. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Make, make better choices. But that's, like, the one time where I was like, bro, uh, I get it. You've lived a very interesting life. But that poor kid, you know, he's two. You're 84. I don't know what you expect from this. <laughs> but that kid is going to lose his father. Um, definitely before he graduates high school. So... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it's a very weird, uh, interesting, I didn't know what to expect from story, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all of it. I was immersed, especially if you like movies, because it's about a guy who loves movies also. He loves art. He loves things that are, you know, quirky and fun, and, and he's just out there doing his best, trying to live the life, and and uh, represent his character. I think it's hilarious that he's been in all three Rush Hour movies because he's Asian and he's played a different character in each movie. I'm like, I love that that's how white we are in this country. Is that we're just like, yeah, nobody will notice. <laughs> just put him, yeah, put him in there. You'd be like, it's the same Asian dude. He's played three different people in the same universe. <laughs> like, that's not weird at all. We're just... Just glad he showed showed up and just pop him in there, you know. Just <sighs> anyway, uh, so yeah, it's on uh, Max. Like I said, I I can't really say much about the audio description here. I, this is it's really hard to get excited about some of these films because it's really hard for them to jump in and and add things into uh, documentaries. So then they never really feel like they're as complete as they could be, but you kind of have to think about as they're coming along, like where else would they have spoken? You know, it's just making good use of the time when you have it. Um, and I feel like that did that here. It's really hard to gauge sometimes because, man, they're just, I, you don't know what you're missing. That's part of the problem is I don't know what I missed and I don't know what they didn't describe to me. But so much of this is just told from uh, Michael's perspective. He has his uh, his kid, Maximilian, is in this. Maximilian Chow. It's a great name, by the way. Um, definitely feels like somebody who spent some time in the James Bond universe and was like, where'd you get this name? I was in You Only Live Twice. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Maximilian, got it. Um... Yeah, and uh, just some other people who have rolled in and out of their lives. It reminded me of, there was a, a movie adaptation uh, of the book Full Service. 
about that guy's life who lived in Los Angeles and slept with everybody. Uh, or knew who slept with who and was at parties. And it, it was just kind of an interesting book. And they sort of interviewed him for the movie and made a movie out of that. And it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of that. Just a lot of stories, except for this one's... This one resonates more because he has more of a... Uh, a very interesting cultural experience type from starting in China and then being sent to London and just sort of globe trotting before he ever gets anywhere. And then you still keep up with like what happened to his parents, you know, like what, what ended up happening to them, what happened to the rest of his family. Um, you know, a lot of things were happening. A lot of things have happened in China since 1939. So, um, that definitely adds a different layer, whereas full service was pretty much just like, yeah, I was here in L.A. What are you talking I mean, I, after I got out of the war, I just was in L.A. with actors and movies. So it's kind of what that is. So uh, this is a little bit of a different flavor because uh, of how he bounces around. And also he ends up a restaurateur. And uh, so it's an interesting, interesting film. I was interested in it. I don't know if it's my favorite documentary of the year, but it, it certainly... Um, it was something. I'm glad I watched it. I, I always like to sort of get new perspectives out of documentaries. And, uh, this one I think does a really good job of keeping sort of a central idea and pushing that idea forward through the film so it doesn't feel like it's getting messy. It doesn't feel like it's losing. You don't see, like, a more interesting idea, um, than, uh, and then you're like, why are we not talking about that more? I, last year, there was a lot of talk about, like, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which was a documentary about uh, a very specific artist in their battle against the Sackler family, and I felt like that I learned far too much about the artist, and not, too, not as much as I wanted about uh, these... Uh, struggles and, and fights to get the Sackler name off of these uh, art galleries. So that was kind of what I wanted. So I felt like there was an imbalance. I saw sort of a more interesting story, and that was my struggle with loving that movie too much was that part of it. But here, I didn't see that they ignored an interest. They didn't mention something that I thought was more interesting. They just kind of, this, guy, this guy's life is just interesting from start to finish, and he's going to tell you about all of it. And um, that's that. So I'm going to give AKA Mr. Chow an A minus. Thought it was a pretty solid documentary. And uh, I hope you guys check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, why not click the subscribe button? Uh, get, get, help me move up the ranks. Of, of YouTube uh, you could be you could be a part of the beginning of something brand new and uh, also have a website macmovieguy.com you can follow me on X threads or Instagram macmovieguy you can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org it'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it and you can go to the adna.org that's the adna.org it'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series that's it for me today. I will review something else for you guys. See you on the other side.